boy. Oh, boy, that's a commodious gift, isn't it? <laughs> oh, my. Oh, me. Our next speaker is a choice friend of mine and of J.D.'s, and he's really one of us, I think, slightly removed. No man, no man can produce the national hits that he has produced, like Turn Your Radio On, the singing Do Right Family, and the Mississippi Revival. I want you to make him welcome, a one of a kind, choice, Ray Stevens. <clears throat> Thank you, Jerry. Well, I'm here on behalf of the Do Right Family here today. Uh, I see a lot of you have been intimidated into attending this event. <laughs> and don't sell yourself short. It's a brave thing that we all do because uh, I understand Indiana Jones turned down the invitation to come here today. <laughs> to be truthful with you, I don't really know why I'm here. Uh, I re I, J.D. never did anything for me, you know. <laughs> And uh, when I first learned about this, I asked myself, uh, how do you roast a gospel singer? I mean, you know, a pious man. How do you roast that? A graduate of the Wally Fowler Charm School. One of the Masters Five. Now that's a, that's a pretty uh, lofty name for a group, the Masters Five. All the members are on Medicare, I understand. <laughs> and I wasn't gonna come, but Don Light, who is a good friend of mine, called me and he said, uh, you should do this. And I said, well, Don, why? He said, well, I'll give you two reasons. I says, what are they? He said, Reason number one and reason number two. And I couldn't argue with that. <laughs> so here I am. Uh, I feel like I ought to talk like this, though. I... But no, it's hard to roast a modest man like J.D. Sumner. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> a, a man who grew up poor. I mean, that's, uh, any, everybody in show business was always poor. You ever notice that? There are no rich people in show business until after they make it, right? They all start out real poor. J.D. was poor, though. He told me when he was growing up that uh, his mama, when he needed a laxative, his mama just sat him on the potty and told him ghost stories. And that's poor, I want to tell you. <laughs> but uh, since he, you know, he was with Elvis for all those years and made a whole bunch of money, and uh, a lot of people thought that would change J.D., but he's still the same half horse he always was, I understand. <laughs> Meanwhile, I met J.D. some years ago. I don't know if you remember this, but we were at RCA Studios back when it was not a tourist attraction. It was a real studio there on the corner of uh, Hawkins and 16th. It's no longer 16th. It's now Music Square West. I mean, it's confusing to get around up here if you've been here before they started changing everything around. Meanwhile, I'll never forget the first time I met J.D. We were in the men's room, as it turned out, in RCA, and uh, I'll never forget the first words uh, J.D. said to me. He said, you splattered on my two-tone perforated shoes.
And I looked down and uh, he only had one shoe on. <laughs> I asked him, I said, did you lose the shoe? He said, no, I found one. <laughs> But he, he is one of the few guys I know who can go four octaves below the piano. He really took it seriously when he read in the Bible that the Lord said, Lo, I am with you always. <laughs> and so he has always tried to be low and uh, succeeded, I must say. Meanwhile, uh, I am told that upon hearing J.D. for the first time, evil Knievel called, wanted to jump his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> They had it all set up, but CBS wouldn't go for it, so they called it off. But I understand that uh, when he clears his throat, some mornings when he wakes up, a bat and a whippoorwill will fly out. You know, it's, it's deep recesses down there. <laughs> he can get low. He puts broken glass back together. To <laughs> <laughs> Follows Ella Fitzgerald around, just cleaning up the damage, you know. Gets his underwear made at Nashville Tent and Awning. Yes. <clears throat> Had a vasectomy last Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I heard that. <laughs> I understand he got it at Sears. It's there in the catalog. Page 431, I believe. Only problem is now every time he gets excited, his garage door is open. Just... <laughs> I want to say that, uh, in conclusion, I'm proud to be asked to be a roaster here today. And I've always been a big fan of J.D. Sumner, and I mention his name in just about every show I do out there on the road. Uh, because uh, people seem to laugh when I do that, so... J.D., thank you. Good to see you.